Hey everyone, welcome to another video of Flight Simulator 2020. In today's video, I'd like to demonstrate how to perform a basic uh, engine start, an actual engine start uh, using the 152. What I mean by a basic engine start is not pressing Control E or Shift E that, um, to automatically start the engine for you, but the actual correct way to do it if you were actually in an actual in an actual Cessna 152. So, in order, for first thing to do is to identify what controls correlates to engine starting. So, there's actually four things uh, related to engine starting. We have what we call the th master switch, ignition switch, throttle mixture controls, and oil pressure gauge. The throttle is what. Uh, pretty much accelerates and, dis and decelerates the aircraft. The black throttle is the black throttle when you're doing an engine start you want to make sure it's on a one-fourth at least in an opened position. What I mean by that is you just push it forward by at least a quarter of an inch like one-fourth for engine start. As for the knob next to it, it's a red mixture knob. That is used to control the fuel-air mixture ratio in order to keep the engine running smoothly. By doing so, when you uh, push it forward, you actually increase the fuel into the fuel-air mixture, in which we call enriching the mix. We enrich in the mixture by pull, and if we pull back, we actually decrease the fuel flow into the fuel-air mixture, which is what we call we leaning. We lean the mixture. Another way of cutting off the engine is what we call idle cutoff, is when we pull the knob, the red knob all the way back. Now there's a an, a lock button in the back of the red knob that pushes in and out. That keeps that, the purpose of it is to prevent the red mixture knob from moving. That keeps it in a locked position and if you want to change any mixture, um, a fuel air mixture ratio you will just pr press on it and move the knob as you please and then there's another way of adjusting their fuel air ratio mixture is what we call the vernier adjuster it's it's the portion of the knob where you rotate it counterclockwise or clockwise if you want to do a small adjustment instead of pressing on the the lock button and then using the up and then the forward and back motion you just turn it clockwise if you want to twist it clockwise if you want to enrich in the mixture which provides more increase in fuel into the mixture or if you want to, or if you want to decrease it you just twist it counterclockwise but for now when you want to do an engine start you want to push the mixture all the way forward to full rich and then once the engine starts you want to slightly twist it counterclockwise like I said to leaning a little bit in order to save some fuel because there's no purpose of having full rich when you're taxing that just gives it makes it more efficient to save fuel as you tax away to your t into the runway next you have the master switch which is the red rocket switch right there this is what controls the electrical power uh, on the in the aircraft on the ground and you turn on the electrical switch you're actually consuming the electric source from the battery itself and not the alternator because once you start the engine and the propeller starts to rotate and, and, this, and the propeller starts to rotate and then everything starts working the alternator kicks in and the battery and then the alternator starts charging the battery now the master has no relation with the ignition switch so that means what I mean by that is you can have the engine running with the ignition switch, the propeller will continue to rotate and turn, and you can turn off the master switch off, and it will have no effect on the ignition switch whatsoever. But it's not recommended. It's not any so any sort of safe practice. Uh, you will never hear anyone doing that unless they're actually in an emergency where they need to preserve electric load. Next we have the ignition switch, which is located next to the master switch. This is similar to the ignition switch in a vehicle, where you just rotate, then the ignition kicks in, which starts the engine, and you hear the vrooming. 
And so there's actually five positions in the Magnetos or the ignition switch. We have off, right, left, both, and start. When you're doing the engine start, you want to make sure you rotate the key clockwise to the start position where you rev the engine up. And then once you hear the engine start revving, you want to turn it clockwise, uh, counterclockwise to the both position as soon as the engine starts. Next, and finally last, we have what we call the oil pressure gauge. That's this is what this is the important part of the startup in which it gives you indication if your if your engine has a good startup or not by doing so usually the the pressure the oil pressure gauge will give you indication like around 30 60 seconds after the engine has started the oil pressure would increase if the oil is warm that means that someone previously had an aircraft before you and the oil pressure will increase slowly if the oil is cold and it's been there for quite some time. The oil pressure increase will increase quickly and fast if the oil is warm. Now however, there's a possibility that the oil pressure will give you no indication whatsoever, which is uh, quite a bad sign, so it is recommended that you shut down the engine to avoid any damage. Now that covers it for the basic engine and what instrument corresponds to it. We're going to start doing what we call the start. We're going to start the engine. Now for basic purposes, it's for, for, be for best practices and safety, you want to make sure you follow the checklist. I already, I already have one that's... I already have a checklist that I utilized when I did the my own training. I'll put up it'll put down a link and I'll just display it in the round top left corner somewhere around there. And we'll start right through it. So before you start the airplane, you want to make sure that we have the parking brake set, which we have right here. Turn on the strobes and beacon, and then we'll make sure that we signal everyone around us that we are about to do an engine start. That's not recommended to start the engine when there's a bunch of people around. Unfortunately, we have uh, the tow guy right in front of us, and then another one on the right. And they are just AI, so we have no issues. We'll just pretend they don't exist, and they're not even in front of us. By do by turning on the strobe and the beacon, you're giving it the outside the people in the outside of the aircraft an idea that you're about to start an engine. So, but and, and also a good practice is you just open the window and and just shout out clear prop to give them an idea that you're about to start the engine. Now once the engine starts, you want to set the throttle to a thousand RPM and then make sure that the oil pressure is in the green zone. Now there are certain times that the, we do face issues sometimes when we start the engine. So there are certain things to make sure that the battery is in good condition, make sure that the master switch has not been set on for a long period of time or else the battery will deplete. And then of course it makes this people to recharge it. And we'll make sure the battery is not in poor condition. If 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 it is in poor condition, then you have to replace it. Third, you want to make sure that the alternator is working properly in order f if the alternator is working, because that's what provides the battery to be charged. If the alternator is not working, then that needs to be fixed. And then you have to discontinue your flight. Hopefully you find it very informative and helpful. I'll be continuing doing these series and tutorials. And if there's anything else you have in mind, that if there's anything else you have in mind that you would like me to perform and do, I, I, I would suggest you put it down in the comment section and I'll read through that. If you like what you're seeing, then consider subscribing and liking the video for more future videos and helpful tips. Hey there, I think you just reached the end of the video. If you like this video and find it very informative and helpful, then please consider subscribing for more future videos.